Well, we are here. The last two chapters of the book of Revelation. I praise Yahweh that this task was able to be carried out. I mean, I'm absolutely amazed. These are probably the hardest videos to make, and it is all through him that they have been able to be made. So I want to give him all the praise and the honor, for he's truly worthy to be praised. In the other nine videos, we went through a lot of messages and heavy events that are prophesied to come. And as the world seems right now, it does not seem that the fulfillment of these prophecies are far away. Let's just go back and review what we've learned. In part one, we've discussed the first three chapters. In this, we saw John being visited from Yahshua. Yahshua gives John messages to the seven churches, which is very important for us all. He who has ears to hear, hear what the Spirit says to the churches. In part two, we discuss chapters four through six. In this part, we see John get caught up to heaven and he is shown visions of what is to come. In this video, we see the opening of six of the seven seals, which brings a lot of death and destruction to the earth. In this part, we are introduced to what the world has labeled as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. In part three, it discusses chapters 7 through 9, and we see the opening of the last seal, which brings about the blowing of the seven trumpet judgments. Things significantly heat up from this point. We see the sealing of the 144,000. We see plagues and torment from the blowing of the trumpets. We get a clear picture that the times of the Great Tribulation will be the worst times in history. In part 4, we cover chapters 10 through 12. In this, we see an important part of the prophecy. The two witnesses are prophesied and spoken of in this chapter, and they play a big part in witnessing our true Messiah to the world. In this part, we also discuss the Revelation 12 sign. Part 5 discusses chapter 13 on its own. This is a big chapter in the book of Revelation and contains much prophecy, so it had to be discussed by itself. In this part, we discuss the Antichrist, the False Prophet, and the Mark of the Beast along with the moving parts that come with it, like the one world government, the one world religion, and the one world currency, what the puppet masters label as the new world order. Part six discusses chapters 14 through 16, in which we are in the last half of the seven year tribulation period. We see the wrath of Elohim being poured out through his bowl judgments. From this point, we are able to clearly see the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls. In part 7, we then discuss very important topics spoken of in chapters 17 and 18, the Whore of Babylon and Mystery Babylon herself. This is a topic that is surrounded around much confusion. From this, what we consistently need to hold on in us and remember is do not be influenced by the Whore and come out of Mystery Babylon, her ways, her traditions, her mindsets. Come out of her. In part 8, we discuss chapter 19. This was a discussion about a beautiful event in heaven, the wedding supper of the Lamb, when the bride has made herself ready for the bridegroom, Yahshua. This is our goal. And then we see the battle of Armageddon, which in truth really isn't even a battle. In the last part, part nine, we discuss chapter 20. This was a discussion about two important events, Messiah's 1000 year millennial kingdom and judgment day. Two very big events that need to be understood. This was the book of Revelation up to the last two chapters, and we are finally at the end. We have spoken so much of the warnings, the judgments, and the plagues, but in this, we finally get to talk about what awaits those who remain faithful and true to the end, those who are written in the book of life. This is what we all should be working towards, and I praise Father for giving us this final imagery so that we have somewhat of a glimpse into the magnificence that is to come. This is the final two chapters of the book of Revelation. Let's begin. Revelation chapter 21. Now, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there is no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from Elohim prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Elohim is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. Elohim himself will be with them, and be their Elohim. 
and Elohim will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Aleph and Tav, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirst. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his Elohim, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Then one of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues, came to me and talked with me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from Elohim, having the glory of Elohim. Her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Also, she had a great and high wall with twelve gates, and twelve angels at the gates, and names written on them which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. Now the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The city is laid out as a square. Its length is as great as its breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs, its length, breadth, and height are equal. Then he measured its wall, 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of an angel. The construction of its wall was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth, emerald, the fifth, sardonyx, the sixth, sardius, the seventh, chrysolite, the eighth, beryl, the ninth, topaz, the tenth, chrysoprase, the eleventh, jacinth, and the twelfth, amethyst. The twelve gates were like transparent glass, but I saw no temple in it, for Yahweh, El Shaddai, and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of Elohim illuminated it. The Lamb is its light, and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. There shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. But there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Revelation chapter 22 And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of Elohim and of the Lamb, in the middle of the streets, and on either side of the river, was a tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of Elohim and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp, nor light of the sun, for Yahweh Elohim gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Then he said to me, These words are faithful and true. And Yahweh Elohim of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, See that you do not do that. For I am your fellow servant, and of your brethren the prophets, and of those who keep the words of this book. Worship Elohim. 
And he said to me, do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Aleph and the Tav, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Yahshua, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star, and the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him who hears say, Come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, Elohim will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, Elohim shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Master Yahshua. The grace of our Master Yahshua Messiah be with you all. Amen. Hallelujah. This is it. We see, after all the plagues and judgments during the Great Tribulation, after the Battle of Armageddon, the Millennial Kingdom, and then Judgment Day, we have the beginning of our promises. We have the new heaven and the new earth, the new Jerusalem. Let's discuss it. Chapters 21 and 22 are a description of the eternal place that all that are saved through Messiah will be. The first heaven and the first earth are replaced by the new heaven and the new earth that was prophesied by Isaiah in chapter 65, verse 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. This is not the earth that we know today. As chapter 21 starts, all the sinners of all the ages, both demons and humans, including Satan, the beast, and false prophet, and all others who rejected Yahshua are in the lake of fire forever. We see a new heaven and a new earth. As Peter tells us, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 13. This new earth will be a perfect environment similar to that of the Garden of Eden. New Jerusalem will be coming down to the new heaven and new earth. New Jerusalem is the capital city of heaven, a place of perfect holiness. The city is illustrated as a bride because it contains the bride and takes on her character. The bride includes not only the church, but all the rest of the redeemed from all the ages who will live forever in this holy eternal city. Verses 3 and 4 speak of how wonderful this time will be. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Elohim is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. Elohim himself will be with them, and be their Elohim. And Elohim will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Revelation chapter 21, verses 3 and 4. The tabernacle was the original symbol of Elohim dwelling with his people. In eternity, mankind will dwell with Elohim. In that eternal state, we will not only enjoy fellowship with our redeemed loved ones, but we will also have actual fellowship with Elohim himself. Since there will never be a tear in heaven, nothing will be sad, disappointing, deficient, or wrong. All tears, pain, sorrow, and death will be removed in that heavenly New Jerusalem, where believers will live. We will know perfect peace and joy. In verse 6, when Yahweh says, it is done, it represents Elohim's promise that this new state will be forever. Aleph and Tav are the first and last letters of the Hebrew alphabet. 
Hence, this phrase represents the sum of all things. And he says that he who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his Elohim and he shall be my son. An overcomer is one who exercises saving faith in the master, Yahshua the Messiah. Remember, each of the seven letters to the seven churches found in Revelation chapter 2 and 3 ends with the promise of he that overcomes will inherit these things. You must make sure that you are an overcomer. He has told you what awaits you if you are one. You will have perfect peace, living amongst our creator in his presence with joy and peace, and there will never be any sadness, sorrow, or negativity. If we are faithful to him in the face of all odds, we will inherit this eternal life. We then get a serious warning of who will not inherit these things. The kinds of people who will be outcast from the new heaven and the new earth that will be in the lake of fire. I think it is important to highlight the first two characteristics in verse 8. It says, the fearful, unbelieving. This needs to be at the top of everyone's attention right now, as the world is aggressively trying to steer your place in this new heaven and earth by making you move through straight fear. You're scared of the coronavirus, scared of the vaccine, scared of what will happen in the tribulation. There is nothing but fear. How many of us have older family members that won't enjoy the last of their days because they are gripped with fear of this virus? Family members that have been saved all their life, but in these last days, forgetting who protects them and keeps them. Fear is not from God. Fear is the opposite of faith. Make sure you do not let the world steal your faith and keep you out of the arms of our Father. He does not accept it. If you believe in him, then believe in him. But nevertheless, pay close attention to who he says will not inherit these promises and make sure that it is not you. Next, there's an important part that needs some clarification. When you talk to Hebrew Israelites that say that salvation is only for us and other nations cannot be saved, they love to use this part of the scripture to justify their view. They say that because the gates are named after the 12 tribes, that only those who descend from the 12 tribes can enter into the gate. The first thing I want to say to those that use this is to be very careful. You see that in the next chapter, chapter 22, what Yahshua says to those that add to this book. Do not add your conditions to prophecy that are not there. It does not say that only Israel can only walk through those gates. So you should not say this. That is very dangerous to do. If we let scripture have its day, this subject is very easy to clarify and to see the error in that argument if you just keep reading. Because verse 24 says, And the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light. You see what it says? The nations, literally the peoples, redeemed people from every nation and ethnic group will dwell in heaven's light. In the eternal city, there will be no more divisions, barriers, or exclusions because of race or politics. All kinds of people in eternity dissolve into the people of Elohim, and they will move freely in and about the city. Much of that false doctrine that is spewed using end times prophecy about making white people slaves is proven very easily if we just read this book without our own preconceived views. Nothing about this vision talks about people being slaves. We did not see slaves in the millennial kingdom before Judgment Day. All those who were not saved through Messiah were not alive. They were waiting for judgment. And then after Judgment Day, as we move into the new heaven and new earth, there is no reference to slavery. All that were living against Elohim were judged and cast into the lake of fire for their eternal punishment. Unfortunately, this will include all of those who add to these prophecies to place their own hatred and will in over our creators. Please make sure you do not align to these false doctrines of hate. Hebrew Israelites, please do not bring your racial divisions created by Satan into this wonderful blessing. This is a time that is not separated by anything except those who truly believe in Yahshua and live for the Most High and then those who do not. That is the separation. All that other noise does not have a place during this time. People from every tongue, tribe, and nation, whether Jew or Gentile, as long as they believe in Messiah and live through him, following his ways and commands, will be united as God's people. Another wonderful part of this is to know that there will be no need for a temple because Yahweh El Shaddai, the Almighty, and the Lamb, Yahshua, are the temple. There will be no need for a temple in heaven to provide a means for a man to fellowship with Elohim. 
Elohim and the Lamb are the temple of the eternal city. There will be no need for anyone to go anywhere to worship Elohim. Believers will constantly be in his presence. There will never be a minute when they are not in perfect, holy communion with Yahweh, El Shaddai, and the Lamb. Chapter 22 contains Elohim's last message to man. Here, at the close of the Bible, we are reintroduced to the tree of life, which has not been mentioned in the Bible since Genesis chapter 3, where Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden. Paradise is restored in the eternal state. All that was lost in the fall is redeemed by the Lamb. That's wonderful. Verses 3 and 4 of chapter 22 says, There should be no more curse, but the throne of Elohim and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. The curse on humanity and the earth because of Adam and Eve's disobedience, which is found in Genesis chapter 3, verses 16 through 19, this will be finished. Elohim will never have to judge sin again, since it will never exist in the new heaven and the new earth. The greatest blessing of this eternity is that they shall see his face. In the Bible, no unglorified human could ever see God's face and live. The saints in New Jerusalem will see God's face. Being perfectly holy and righteous, they'll be able to endure the blazing, glorious light from Elohim's presence without being consumed. That was impossible for mortal men. We should all pay attention to Yahshua in verse 7 when he says, Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Revelation chapter 22, verse 7. Most people avoid revelation. But if we obey his word and keep the sayings as was commanded, then we must read and understand what they are. I believe he also means the entire Bible as well. Maybe you're asking, what does it mean to obey or keep the book of Revelation? Think of it as a general command to long for Messiah's return and our eternal fellowship with him. It calls believers to desire heaven, to desire holiness, to desire to see Messiah triumph over his enemies, to desire the end of the curse and desire the glories of Messiah's earthly kingdom in the new heaven and new earth. He says it again in verse 12 with a little more added to it. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. Yahshua declares the imminence of his return. Our rewards will be for the things, treasures, we have stored in heaven. Rewards are always based on works done by believers, based on their faithfulness in serving Messiah in this life. Having knowledge that Yahshua could return at any moment shouldn't lead believers to a life of idle waiting for his coming. Instead, it should produce diligent, obedient, worshipful service to Elohim and urgent proclamation of the gospel to unbelievers. Verse 17 says, And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him who hears say, Come. And let him who thirsts, Come. Who whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. This is our master's last invitation to humankind. Our master, who is always concerned for the souls of the lost, closes his great revelation with a challenge for individual people to call on his name, to come. He indicates that there are two who invite us to come to him, the spirit and the bride. In addition, he will even use him who hears. All believers everywhere should be engaged in saying to the fellow human beings, whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Yahshua HaMashiach, of course, is the water of life. Everyone has a hungering and thirsting for Elohim. Being created by him, we are born with it. The unfortunate part is that some do not know what they are hungering for, and that they are actually hungering and thirsting for him. That's why it is our jobs as believers to bring him to the world and allow them to see that he is truly what they need. Towards the end of the book and the Bible, he gives this warning. Basically, do not add or take away from this book. And I believe he means a whole Bible as well. The warning here is addressed to those who engage in deliberate falsification or misinterpretation of scripture. Those who Paul denounces as corruptors of the word of Elohim. Our master ends the book of Revelation and the Bible with, 
He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Master Yahshua. The grace of our Master Yahshua, Messiah, be with you all. Amen. You see, he is coming quickly, and we all must be ready for him. He has told us of the things to come so that we are not deceived by the world. He has given us a glimpse of our promises if we endure and overcome. These are the final chapters of the book of Revelation. I may try to put all the illustrations of the chapters in one video without commentary, so anyone that wants to be fed by his word through this book can always come back to it. But this book is something that is truly important and something that should always be thought of and placed within our hearts and minds. We are living through the times where the events of this book are about to transpire. And if we do not hold on to these prophecies and understand what is happening from a biblical standpoint, we take on a big risk of being steered by Satan into falsely worshiping him through fear and manipulation. Father has given us this prophecy so that we know what is to come and we are not taken advantage by the snares and traps of Satan. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. We must hold on to this prophecy and live in the expectation of its fulfillment. All pastors and churches should be actively teaching their assemblies of these prophecies. This should be the focus of all those who claim belief in Yahshua the Messiah. Do not add or take away from these prophecies. Do not use these prophecies to promote hate or separation. This is a weapon for good so that we will know the will of our master and understand what is to come. If we stand with him and live in his ways and understandings, we will be ready for him and whatever else is to come. We are approaching very turbulent times, times that we should be putting on our seatbelts and just bracing ourselves for impact. There are many people living today, walking through their flesh, asleep to the world and what is occurring, but we are not asleep like them. We are walking in confidence and assurance of who covers us and that as long as we are faithful and overcomers, our destiny is bright and filled with greatness. Do not let this world scare you. Do not live in fear. Live in assurance. Live in peace. Live in joy. As the world crumbles around us, we are able to live with peace because we understand what awaits us. So please hold on to these words. Read this book of prophecy and let it assure you that your faith is placed securely on what truly matters. Live as a victorious, overcoming believer who is about to be redeemed because our redemption is near. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please don't forget to like this and share it with others. If you have not done so already, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Please don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I really would like to thank all those who support this ministry. You know who you are. Your contributions have been an extreme blessing to this ministry and are a big part of how this Revelation series was able to be completed. I'm very thankful for you and humbled by your support. Thank you for being a blessing and your continued support to this mission. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.